What's going on guys? This is the Red Rogue and I hope you're all doing well today. For this episode, I figured I would go over three of the new ways coming in patch 915 that you can get your alt a bit caught up with gear, as well as my opinions of the pros and cons to each one, and if I'd consider using any of them. Keep in mind these three methods are from very different sources of gameplay, so that alone might be a factor of how likely you are to use them. First, we'll start with the only method that is technically infinitely repeatable and lets you target specific pieces of gear, Corthian Armaments. Now, I know some of you are probably thinking that I'm crazy and didn't realize that these already existed in the game when patch 9.1 came out. However, that is only half true, which I'll explain in a moment. For those who don't know about Corthian Armaments, they're a bind on account item that you can find around the new Corthia zone or from the Death's Advanced Quartermaster, Duchess Minx. If you buy them from Duchess, they originally were going to cost 1000 Stygia, and gave a random item level 200 piece of gear for your currently active loot specialization. These also are upgradable all the way to 233 item level using catalogued research, which is a currency that you earn from handing in all those relic fragments that you'll find around Corthia to the Archivist located in Keeper's Respite. However, with patch 915, you'll be able to buy specific Corthian armor pieces for each slot whereas the original Corthian Armaments item would only give you a random RNG piece of loot that your character could use. Just like the original Corthian Armament item, these are bind on account and are sold by Duchess Minx as well. However, you don't need any reputation at all to buy the specific Corthian slot pieces, unlike the RNG style one which requires being at least friendly with Death's Advance. The cost of these new Corthian items varies based on the armor slot, with cheap off-piece slots costing 750 Stygia, and larger items like weapons costing 1500 Stygia. The original RNG Corthian armaments have had their cost reduced to 750, so if you have a completely fresh level 60 character and are feeling lucky, then you can buy a few of the RNG ones for cheap, and hope that you get some of the more expensive pieces before focusing on specific armor slots that you haven't been able to acquire. And again, these are bind on account, so you can use any Stygia you have lying around on your other characters to quickly beef up a fresh level 60, which is really handy. This is overall the least difficult way of getting a lot of gear for a new alt, since Stygia comes from all sorts of junk in the maw, which you'll end up in there a lot if you're doing all the Coven assaults and dailies and whatnot. The downside is you're basically going to get stuck with upgrading this Corthian gear to 220 item level, since you can't upgrade past that until you buy the final two research reports from the Archivist in Keeper's Respite. And reaching that basically means getting all the way to tier 6, which takes so long that you can basically get gear from virtually anything else before you have this reputation completed. It is going to be a lot faster to get Archivist reputation in patch 915 since they're adding a lot of quality of life things, but I'd really just recommend this gearing method as a fast way to catch up an alt while still doing all the stuff that you're probably going to do for questing and renown and all that other junk. If you don't like raiding, PvP, or Mythic Plus, then you could have a reasonably geared character strictly off of this Corthian stuff and your legendary, which is pretty crazy, albeit a lot more time consuming than other methods. Even for just a bunch of quick item level 200 gear though to flesh out a new character, it is really not a bad way to start out, and it's been really helpful on the couple of alts that I've been working on personally. Up next there are two more bind on account items for gearing, and these are 100% brand new for 915, with one being arguably pretty not that good, but I'll get on that in a moment. First, we have the Valorous Equipment Cache. This is a new item sold by Adara, a brand new NPC that they kinda just plopped right next to the Flightmaster in Oribos. I guess this way no one can say they could never find this new NPC, it's kinda random to put them right next to the Flightmaster. I don't know. Either way, the Valorous Equipment Chest costs 500 Valor, and inside of it will contain one random piece of upgradable Mythic Dungeon gear that starts at 210 item level for Shadowlands Season 2. To purchase it though, you will need a Mythic Plus rating of at least 1500 for the current season on that character, which is the cutoff for the Keystone Conqueror achievement. It is bind on account, so you can open this on any character on your account. However, with the massive loot pool of Mythic Dungeons, and the fact that Valor is a finite currency, meaning you can only earn so much of it in a season on a single character, I'm dubious of how useful this item could really be. Our Valor Cap does go up a little bit every week of the season, but with the completely RNG nature of getting virtually any item that your loot spec is eligible for from any dungeon in Shadowlands from this box, and the fact that you not only spend Valor to get the box, 
but you spend Valor to upgrade the items, you're also capped at how much you can upgrade the item based on the individual character's Mythic Plus score since none of the achievements for Keystone stuff is account-wide anymore. Again, maybe if you just had a bunch of alts that had Valor just piling up with no need for it because all your stuff was already maxed out, then you can gamble and see about getting a trinket you really want or just fleshing out a brand new character. But then you would have to spend all your Valor to do that and you wouldn't have anything left to upgrade it unless it was a new character and then I guess it's okay. I mean, maybe it'll be more beneficial for some folks, but I'm really not seeing this as that great of an option. Lastly, we have the Unchained Equipment Chest. This is also sold by Audara, and is basically the PvP equivalent of the Valorous Equipment Chest. It costs a little less at 375 Conquest, but the Conquest cap does go up slower than the Valor one, so keep that in mind. To purchase this chest, you'll need a rating of at least 1400 in either 2s, 3s, or Rated Battlegrounds. Not a super heavy requirement, which is good, and what's better is that it gives a random piece of the upgradable gladiator gear, which in Season 2 starts at item level 220 in world content and scales to 233 in PvP situations. Now, I'm no PvPer, but having just looked at the conquest base cost on the vendor, this could be a halfway decent way to save some conquest if you're willing to gamble a little, since even the cheapest pieces of conquest gear cost 525 points. You do run the risk of getting things that might not be exactly your best stat priority though, but for someone like myself who doesn't really PvP or need my conquest points for anything at all, it'd definitely be a tempting way to get some 220 heavy versatility gear for some of my melee DPS alts that I've been leveling. Of course, to upgrade any conquest gear past the item level of 220 does require farming honor and reaching rating thresholds on the character you're upgrading it with. So if you're not really serious about getting into PvP gear, then this is just some 220 gear if you don't have excessive rage issues in PvP like some people I know who haven't touched it since Warlords of Draenor. Not to mention anyone specific of course, but uh, for those getting into conquest gear and enjoy PvP, this looks like a pretty cost effective way of catching up to others, and if you're willing to try your luck with the RNG pieces, then you might actually come out on top. Conquest points are season capped, with a cap increase of 550 a week. So if you only have one character, this is a bit risky since you could theoretically get the same piece over and over, but if you were to have other characters on your account that you could use to funnel some of those conquest bind on account items to you, then this could be pretty handy. Honestly, all three of these gearing methods have their pros and cons, but I hope this information and insight on each one helps you figure out the best way to catch up some of those alts you might be dusting off in patch 915, or even if they're just hitting level 60 now. If the video was useful to you, then please consider leaving a like or a comment, as they're both tremendously appreciated and help so much with the channel's growth. And as always, my appreciation and gratitude to all of my viewers, and especially my patrons, who all help make these Shiba shenanigans possible. Thank you all so much for watching. This is the Red Rogue, and I'll see you guys around.